I'm Mike, and today, super meat, the differences between it and other cultured meats, as well as a comparison of its pros and cons, and a level-headed look at the company's promises, and finally, the basic question, is it vegan? Super Meat is a startup that is utilizing the newest technology to grow lab meat, or more appropriately, cultured meat, claiming that they will not induce animal suffering from testing all the way to production. Remember that $300,000 burger that Mark Post made a while back? Well, that, like most other cultured meat, required the use of bovine fetal serum, which is essentially sucking the life out of a cow's fetus until it starves of oxygen and dies. The number to remember is three calf fetuses per liter. Ugh, not, not fun, that's disgusting. And most cultured meat simply uses muscle cells, which can only divide 15 to 20 times until they reach their limit, which means you need to keep a massive herd to harvest from. Muscle cells also require serum at this stage in the game. Very not vegan, but super meat uses a different process. They use mesenchymal cells. They can be described as adult stem cells, which can double indefinitely. Although unlike embryonic stem cells, they are limited in what types of cells they become. However, they can still become all the necessary components of meat. They can become muscle cells, which are the main component of meat. They can also become adipose tissue, which is essentially that fat that marbles meat. They can also become connective tissue, cartilage, and bone and bone marrow. All that delicious stuff that people just can't give up eating. The benefits of this are twofold. Because these cells can reproduce indefinitely, you can theoretically meet the entire planet's demand for meat by taking one biopsy, one sample that wouldn't even be felt due to local anesthesia use. And in the case of chicken, which the company is initially focusing on because there are mesenchymal cells at the base of a feather, it may be possible to get the sample they need from a fallen or plucked feather. The second claim the company makes for mesenchymal cells is that unlike animal muscle, they can be grown in a medium other than serum. They can be grown in a medium that does not require any animal products whatsoever. Allegedly, this method will be able to grow a chicken breast in about two weeks or a little less. The vision of the company is to then sell little bioreactors that can grow meat locally. Okay, now to elaborate on their claims of their animal impact. Firstly, they want three to five samples from chickens to establish a variation. They say that they will not have any animal inputs in testing, and they'll also have no animal inputs in the production process. So what's not to love about it? Well, many vegans like me have reservations and want to use caution before fully endorsing them for a variety of reasons, which I will get to. Firstly, they are a company that deals with animals and animal products. We need to be sure that it really can and will be done in the way that they are promising, because the reality is it's still two years away from proof of concept and that's their estimation, that's not necessarily what's gonna happen. As their lead scientist says, quote, it's a process where we actually have evidence for each major roadblock on the way that we can actually do it. That it's going to take time. Meaning they theoretically know how to put the pieces together, but they have yet to do it. Now you can look at that as a reason to fund them, or you can look at that as a reason for concern. It could simply be impossible. What if they hit unforeseen roadblocks or limitations to mesenchymal cells that would force them to use animal inputs or go out of business? And their CEO is vegan, what if they Steve Jobs him and kick him out and then decide to go the way of animal exploitation? This is capitalism after all, and capitalism rarely plays well with animals. Now before I get to the benefits, and there are many, I want to present the worst case scenario in which super meat actually increases animal suffering. Perhaps when super meat launches and becomes relatively well known, maybe reaches 5 to 10% of the market share, there could be a counterculture, a real meat back to nature sort of a movement. This would probably be largely driven by negative ad campaigns similar to those by the dairy industry on almond milk today. If that could bolster even a 20% increase in real animal meat, then that would increase animal suffering overall. That is unlikely, but another scenario would be that it just changes the attitude toward meat to be more positive. 
If, for example, labeling is unclear and it's also sort of a small market share situation, the attitude could change to a sort of, it's all lab meat anyway, I might as well keep eating more kind of situation, and that could increase suffering as well. This is all very unlikely, but I think it's important to not blindly accept the promise of success in this situation. Okay, let's touch on the biggest benefit, the biggest pro, and that is simply that mathematically the case for super meat is very good. We raise and slaughter 70 billion land animals a year, and every single piece of super meat is a piece of animal flesh, real living animal flesh, that will not be eaten. Flesh that was not factory farm, like 99.7% of chickens, for example. Flesh that was not forced bread, and the list goes on. Yes, a vegan diet is absolutely the best way to reduce suffering, but we have to be honest, there is a cohort of people that are just gonna refuse to stop eating meat till the day they die. Lab meat offers a way to keep those people from paying people to kill animals. And yeah, you could just give up on promoting veganism and wait till super meat comes around, but I personally am gonna keep promoting veganism just as hard and no, I don't think it's giving up if you support lab meat. I merely think it's diversifying your strategy to eliminate animal suffering. But there is no denying that something feels a little weird as a vegan supporting this. Normally you can just be sort of like a purity vegan and say, I denounce anything that has anything to do with animal exploitation. But to support super meat, you have to own the fact that these initial three to five chickens will be exploited. No matter how well they are treated, they did not give consent and their needs will probably not be fully met. But I would say the moment that first super meat serving replaces a real chicken serving, then all of that will be massively counteracted. I think another reason this is annoying for vegans is because we've put so much effort continually into telling people that they do not need to be eating meat because we really don't need to be eating meat. But this plays into the idea that you do have to be eating meat, which sort of brings me over to the health part of this. In case we were wondering, no, I will not be eating super meat for health reasons. One of the major, not the only reason I went vegan initially was for health reasons. No matter how much they can manipulate the saturated fat and cholesterol levels, it will still be animal protein, which elevates IGF-1, which fuels every stage of cancer growth. Animal proteins are also cross-reactive with your immune system, which can lead to autoimmune disease diseases, and you risk colitis through the fermentation of meat proteins, and the list goes on. So I wouldn't recommend that vegans eat it in the same way that I don't recommend that people eat oil. It might not have a massive animal input, but I want vegans to stay alive and be healthy. But the important question that seems to be going around is that of adoption. Will the public jump on board and eat super meat? To put this into perspective, let's play a game. It's called Would You Rather. You have to choose one of the options I present, either A or B. Okay, would you rather eat some pig butthole or eat a lab-grown chicken breast? Which one is less disgusting? You choose. Oh wait, people already eat pig buttholes all the time in hot dogs without a second thought. Couple that uncanny ability to ignore the true contents of your food with the reduction or elimination of pathogens in super meat. I mean, the fact that all chicken is drenched in E. coli because of the cross-contamination of poop during slaughter. I think there is good case that it will be accepted by the public. Now to the big question, is it an animal product? Is it vegan? I would say in the strictest sense, it absolutely is an animal product. I kind of view it a little bit like when a lizard runs away and it drops its tail. If you found that tail on the ground and ate it, that would be very not vegan. It's causing animals zero death and zero pain and essentially sort of an echo of an animal in the past, but it is still an animal product. It is still made of animal cells. But not all vegans will have this view and many will certainly start eating lab meat. Back when serum was the only option, one survey showed that about 14% would eat lab meat. Now imagine super meat where all of that suffering is eliminated. We could see maybe one third to half of vegans eating super meat, which would make our case a little bit weaker. I mean, you'd have people saying, if vegans won't give up meat, why should I give up dairy and eggs? The splintering into normal vegans and what I'm just gonna call lab vegans could make it a little bit harder to spread veganism and to be a vegan advocate. Does it just be confusing? One final warning here is that we are working with a startup. I have spent most of my career working in and around startups. I have helped make pitch decks. I have helped do crowdfunding campaigns. And I can tell you this, what 
a startup says when they are trying to get investors is a little bit like what politicians say when they're trying to get elected. Almost anything, and we all know how it turns out after they get elected, and I've personally seen the internal workings after a startup gets funded. Promises are often not delivered. In the case of Supermeat, I hope they are. In the end, Super Meat has a lot of pros and cons, and the benefits could potentially be huge. Humanity is currently expanding hell on Earth for animals in order to meet the demand of the developing world as their meat consumption rises. Yes, veganism is growing, and I am absolutely going to be focusing all of my effort on that, but the truth is animals don't care how you stop killing them. Whether the person that was gonna kill them elects to go vegan or just eats a piece of cultured meat instead, the results are the same. Finally, we need to hold super meat to their claims. If you are supporting them, let them know that the moment they drop their no animal suffering mantra, they are done. As different cultured meats come to the market, we also need to push for the labeling and generally disapprove of serum based cultured meats. We have a lot of work to do. All right, that's it for today. Let me know if you believe the hype or if you have any reservations and what they are. Also subscribe and like to get more people involved in this conversation and see you next time.